So we went through the main ways of making regions of interest to begin with. So the, the common ones are like setting up pixel thresholder to find your tissue, or you can make, use a more complicated pixel classifier to find particular regions with certain characteristics. But then there's a lot of cases where what you want in a region isn't exactly related to the pixel value. Um, a really common one is tumors. And you can use a classifier to find the tumor, and then but you want to find the bound, the look at the bound three region of the tumor. So either the first 50 microns inside the tumor or the 50 microns just outside to understand the immune reaction. Or I use it a lot, I do it manipulation a lot when looking at vessels, either large blood vessels or bronchioles, where it's easy to find the lumen of the vessel, but what I really want is the wall. So you take the lumen and you have to go from there to like finding what what is the wall. And there's a couple of ways in QPath of doing that. So this is a well small section of a human pancreas. The bright spots that you see here are the islets. Um, I'm going to get the colors wrong. One, one is glucagon and one is insulin is in green. This defines the beta cells. Glucagon is in blue. This, these are the alpha cells. Combined, they make up the majority of the islet. And in this particular case, red is 647, which is IL-6, a chemokine that in this study we believe might be important to type 1 diabetes. So as always, take a moment to set your lookup tables just to get rid of so much water. Let's get rid of a little bit of background. Luckily, the insulin and the glucagon staining is really clean. It's weird. I don't know if we've actually demonstrated that. If you can't increase your max enough, you can double click on this. And so first thing, let's just find the overall tissue outline ignoring background in this like fibrous region here. And we're going to do that with a threshold. I'm going to go to annotations tab, go to my class list, reset to default classes. Okay. And then go to classify, pixel classification, create threshold. And let's see if we use, I want this to be reasonably accurate because I want to, I want to really uh, remove the like fibrous tissue between the lobes. I, I want to see those lines. And but use the hoist channel and let's find a threshold. We're all pretty good. We see the lobes, we see the, the breaks in between them. Cool. I'm going to call this. I'm going to wait here. So once again, we're using low resolution, hoist channel, a smoothing sigma of one, a threshold of 6,000, and everything above the threshold is going to be the reaching class. You can set it to ignore, you can set it to unclassified, or you can leave it blank and you're going to get the same result. Okay. Sorry, I, I saved my classifier, but forgot to actually make the objects. So I'm going to load my classifier, create objects. Cool. See yeah, how this looks. Yeah, so I used the parent object being the full image. And these were the sizes I set. I used a minimum whole size just because I want to emphasize the tissue boundaries since we're talking about wearing manipulation. In a real project, I'd probably bump that up. Why are the pieces of tissue in the top right corner and then the bottom right not getting sore? Because they are smaller than a million microns square. Include them or not. If you've already made it and you don't want to change it, that's cool. It's, it's fine. Then we're going to train a classifier to find the islets themselves. And for this one, we are going to need to use the machine learning. So I'm going to make a new class by right-clicking, add, add class. I'm going to turn on the polyline tool. Do I have this? I'm going to turn on the polyline tool by either clicking this like shape or pressing V and drawing some annotations that define the islets. Islets are fun shapes to try to work with because they're not defined by any single marker. Like if you just use insulin alone, first of all, you'll only get half half of your islets. And in type 1 diabetics, you'll get zero islets. If you only use glucagon, you'll, you'll again like lose big chunks. So you have to use a variety of markers. Is there a keyboard shortcut for that polyline tool? V. Thanks. Whatever. I, I, 
Yeah. The only thing that's really important is you want to specifically define edges. But other than that, no. And so I'm going to define the edge of the eyelet, and I'm also going to define the edge of the not eyelet, which I did not do in the other one. Because in the end, we want to create objects around around the eyelet, not around the X print. Um, I made a mistake there, which is fine. I'm just going to delete it. Don't use the brush tool. Don't use the brush tool. It makes it worse. Really? Wait, so what were you doing before version 5, before the polyline tool came out? It, ha it had a different symbol, but it, the tool itself was there. Oh, these. I mean, I should look at those. Yeah, um, and I also just, I clicked on the wrong thing. So I've defined these bunch as negative, which isn't one of my classes. So I'm going to select them by going to, I'm going to select the negative class, go, you can see there's three items that are negative and those are mistakes. Right click, select them all, select objects by classification, go to islet and say those were supposed to be islands. Yes. So I... I drew a line, I called it the other class. And, oh no, that wasn't, uh, actually, hold on. I drew a, I accidentally clicked on other, I'm totally gonna regret what I just did. I accidentally clicked on the other and then auto set a bunch of stuff and had realized that, I, that those were all the incorrect classifications and that was a mistake. I could go through one by one and like click on them and change them, or I can right click on other and go to select objects by classification. And that highlights everything that is called other. And all of this is, and then I'm going to click on ignore and set class, and everything currently selected is now ignore. It also shows up in the workflow. It does. The, yes, well, the, the set it, selecting, not the setting. Yes. Okay. Once, I've, once you've got a bunch of annotations, go to pixel classification, chain pixel classifier. For the sake of speed, I'm going to just suggest a couple of features. This is Gaussian, Laplacian, and weighted deviation, as well as scales one, two, and four. So all of these are different down samples to different amounts, and then applies a particular filter. So, and it's all based on whatever resolution we set here. So at scale one, it uses the current resolution and then applies the Gaussian filter, applies a Laplacian filter, and then applies a weighted deviation. And then it, it downsamples to two, again, compared to this. And at half, it's like going up one. So I like, yeah. So if you only want like big features, it's better to do like two and four. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm just a fan of resolution. So I noticed that my classifier is classifying things that are not in the tissue annotation. Is the region thing allow us to somehow force it to only look at tissue, or is there a later time where we can fix that? When we go to create objects, it'll only create, we, we have the choice of only creating inside. Okay, that. so it's at that stage, because yeah. not in the region. This is just prediction. Yeah, okay. it doesn't, it's too slow for it to try to draw the prediction around the annotation. Okay, cool. Okay. We're spending, I don't know, a couple, let's go with two minutes getting this as good as possible, but once again, this isn't actually, the point isn't get the perfect islands. You have to show off a little bit. Here's a fun thing. This is, I don't know what kind of artifact, but definitely not something, definitely not an island. What is the pink stuff again? What is the antibody? Uh, pink is IL-6. Um, and that thing is probably zero. a piece of fiber from clothing. It's a lot of channels. I think it's just... Yeah, that, we're going to just make that go away. Since it's so different than any, everything else, I, I just drew one little squiggle, and now it's not being classified. As long as you've got, at this stage, as long as you've got a classifier that makes like blobs and then some not blobs, we're going to go with it. Okay. But we're going to call this the island classifier.
uh, because it is more important to get a variety of training data than to get a million pixels in one tiny area. And so at least in my experience, and I think this was what, at least what you were recommending, if you get like a huge region, it's actually really hard to ever train it onto something else. And um, I, as weird as it sounds, like having slightly less but accurately chosen training data ends up with better results. Okay, I guess so. Well, a different way I might phrase it is that you will be saturating your inf the information-rich edge pixels with a whole lot of pixels from the center of your object. Yeah. And therefore, like, if you try to do any kind of training where like 5% of your data is on the outside, it's just less important and not going to be what your classifier is going to focus on. Okay, who has gotten to the point of training and you've saved the yeah, cla the classifier? Now we're going to select tissue annotation, which you can either do by just double clicking or by going to region and right clicking and hitting select objects by classification. Select the whole tissue annotation, either double click or region, right click, select objects. One will appear in the workflow now. Okay, this is uh, a wonderful place to point out. We've been talking about ignored classes sometimes, and this is a this this is features why they exist. We've technically labeled, we've annotated like 10 million pixels as region, and yet it doesn't appear in the pie chart. Nothing gets um, classified as region. And that's because it's, the class name is actually region star. And anything that's starred will not appear, will not like be created. You mean create a row with the star if it was that? You can. So sometimes, especially for fluorescence images, sometimes I'll make two ignored regions. One is like the, the black background and one is like the super bright crap. And just having them as separate can help. Okay. Select region. Create objects, choose parent objects, current selection. That's why we selected the region in the first place. We want to create new annotations. So every eyelet's going to be its own annotation. Minimum object size, no, that's just, is, let's go with 500, should get us a good chunk of the eyelets that we just annotated. Yeah, I should have I should have remembered to do the thing where I duplicate the image, leave the training alone. I forgot. So I'm going to just do that right now. Right click, duplicate. Do not duplicate data files because that'll just recreate the problems. Open the new one. Classify, pixel classification, load pixel classifier. We want to load the pancreas classifier first. Create objects. 100,000 and 10,000. Was it a million? It was a million. No, I, I left. Yeah. And then select that. Did not mean to split that one. Yeah. Create objects, whole thing. Do not split objects. Don't split your tissue. Click for that one. Load the eyelet. Create objects. If you're not following along and you just want to use the project, the version you have open, that's cool. It's fine. Nothing bad's going to happen. And in this case, I'm recreating the eyelets, splitting them smaller. Okay, now that I've managed to lose you all, you, you all take a minute. I have the training annotations named eyelet and my eyelets named eyelet, mm. and I just didn't want to deal with two sets. Okay, I'm going to save this. Oh, so this is just because I've got a weird, um, since oh, I've zoomed in, okay, okay. but to answer your question, it's Shift F. Huh. Shift F does annotations, regular F does, F does detections. I don't think Shift F will fill in any annotation that has an asterisk at the end of the screen. I think so. Yeah, the region doesn't get. So. This is this was from a type 1 diabetes study. One of the things that happens in type 1 diabetes is the islets get invaded by CD45 cells. Right before that happens, or at the very beginning of disease, you see just a ring of CD45 cells around the islet that are trying to penetrate it and are about to. So a really common thing we do in type 1 diabetes studies is to look at, say, 20 microns around every, around every islet and to see what's going on there. In this particular case, we haven't labeled CD45, but 
monarch. And this is called the Perry Island region and is a big deal in the T1D literature. So one way to get that is I'm going to select all of my islets by right-clicking, select object by classification, then go to objects, annotations, expand annotations. I want an expansion radius of 20. I do want to constrain to parent. What this means is that if you have an islet near the border of the tissue, it, when I'm calculating the peri islet, it will go outside the tissue where there's no cells. It'll stop at the tissue. And I do want to remove interior. And what that means is it subtracts the islet out, so you just get a ring. And here. What is it adding for the islet's annotation rather than, in this case, making a new one? Yeah, it assumes you want them to be the same Annotation, honestly, it's not my favorite feature. So actually what I would recommend, if you don't touch anything after you do that, what you'll see is the original islands are highlighted and selected. The new ones are not. Therefore, immediately pick any other class that hasn't been used so far, anything at all, and reset the classifications of the islets to something else. Even if you don't like it, you can change it later. But that means now your islets are one class and your peri islet ring is another. And when you're scripting, the easiest way to do it is to name it peri islet without first. Yeah. And then the expansion that's, is called peri islet. And then you rename it. Uh, that's true. Right? Yeah. So we now have around every islet a ring of 20 microns. One thing that's fun to note is that the original islet shape, you can see where the boundary is. That has the pixel resolution of your classifier, so it's kind of got the blocky pixelated shape, but then it expands into the closest thing to a perfect circle it can find, so it ends up being very... Okay, because we ex constrained the parent, the, this peri islet region does not go out here into the black nothingness. So you can't actually rename a class, you would just make a new one and then assign and, it. And reassign it, yeah. Okay. So for instance, I'm just because I needed to have a button to click, I named it other. Instead, I want to call it islets real. And so I'm going to then highlight, I'm going to deselect everything, highlight my other objects, call them islets real. I'm also going to make a new class called Harry Islet. Highlight the things currently called islets. I know that's confusing. And call it peri island. And so, like, as long as they're different, you can manipulate them at will. What if they're the same? It's a little. Okay. Who has? Don't worry about the class names. That's that was. I was just showing that a feature. Who generally has the peri islet shapes? The other thing that comes up that after you've measured your islets, you've measured your peri islets. The other thing you need to know about your pancreas is what's called the exocrine region, which is everything else. So what we're going to do is simultaneously select whatever is your current classes for islets and peri islets, highlight both of those classes, select by classification, objects, annotations, make inverse. It only makes the region as well. Yeah, it, it can change the parent. Okay. So now I. Oh, sorry. You've got your islets, you've got the peri islet, and you could measure your C45s in all other regions. Sometimes you have situations like this, where these, the, these islets are so close that their peri islet regions are overlapping. And so if there are, if there were cells of interest here, you'd be effectively double counting them. And that's problematic. So we want to not double count these links. So what I'm going to do is select the, the inverse annotation, which is, it's labeled none. It should be at the top and look very different. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to select my peri islet regions and delete them. Just, just for now. And just go back to, we now have islet regions. 
select these objects, annotations, merge selected. So what this does is basically undo the step when we created them in the first place out of the classifier. We split them so that we can count how many. This undoes that. So now you have just one thing, a label. Let's go. Click on that. Objects, annotations, expand this now merged thing. Same rules. We're going 20. We're going to move interior. And the final result is one object where there's no overlapping. You would only ever count these cells once. What you lose in this process is the individual islet by islet results. And which of those is more important is up to you. There's an argument to be made that if these two blobs are too close, are so close, they likely are a single islet, that it's, it's just kind of U-shaped and we just put it through. So what, what I would actually do, like if this were my project, is merge the islets, calculate the peri-islet areas, and then write a script to figure out which for each... Oh, wait, sorry. Nice. We select the peri-islet region, set it to peri-islet. You can redo the splitting. Select that, objects, annotations, split annotations, and now you've got a million. And basically write a script to say every islet inside a single peri islet area, just call one islet and then do the math this way and you end up with 66 individual-ish. Basically, the when you're creating annotations out of your classifier, you can choose to split them or not. Yeah. You can freely undo or redo that decision later. So what I to deal with this case where I have two very close objects that may or may not be one, I would Keep them as a single object, expand it, and then take these peri islets and then split those. And then anything that's touching within the same peri islet region must be a single islet. And you could write a script to find these two shapes and like merge them again. So like you can just like keep doing this really as well. Nearly everything I just did was put into the workflow. So this is all incredibly scriptable. Okay, what else? Yes, if, if you want to do that. Yes, absolutely. There is um, this split by line now. Yeah, I've never actually used that. Let's do five pixel thickness. And what about the merging one? Yeah, select two of them and then go to object annotations merge. Yeah, the same, the it, same for, it's, for this, yeah. It's... Uh, yes, so what I would actually recommend doing is do the cell detection first, so you'll only ever have one cell. Draw the line, split it, and then figure out via the hierarchy which which one is. You know what I did? I know what I did. Okay. I'm going to select this, delete it. Once I merged my islets, they stopped being a member of the hierarchy. Then you expanded them. Yeah. yeah. So then you have to insert this into the hierarchy, then expand again. And, oh, and okay. To the, uh... So it <laughs> will not go outside. It will go across. That's one of those things where if we had split these into different pieces of tissue or something, yeah. it would no longer be part of the parent. Yeah. Lobes are hard, and I have spent I have spent an enormous amount of time trying to automatically like draw lines like this, where like you can see that it's supposed to be a different piece of tissue, but like it's not always there, and I cannot reliably succeed. Yeah. 